Okay, I have been wanting to start making Power Platform videos for a while now. And in August of 2023, Microsoft changed the licensing model for Power Apps and Power Automate. So this is a good opportunity to get started. Okay, so let's talk about Power Apps first. So the way moving forward is going to be Power Apps Premium, which from licensing perspective, has got your users covered for accessing an unlimited number of applications across your organization. Asian. And that is great. Of course, you can still close applications so or only a group of users can launch the application. But from licensing perspective, Power Apps Premium has got your users covered and ready to go. And the good thing is they're keeping a pay-as-you-go. So the whole pay-as-you-go licensing scheme is still round and it costs $10 per user per month. Power Apps Premium is 20 per user per month. The difference is... Power Apps Premium is an entitled license. So you give that to a user and that user is expected to keep the license month after month after month. And they're also expected to use many Power Apps during those months. As I said, Power Apps Premium doesn't have limits in the number of apps the user can launch during the month. Pay as you go is $10 per user per month. So you get charged $10 as soon as the user launches an application at least once during, during the month. Pay as you go is very similar to paying for entering an establishment. You want to enter, you pay. That time you paid covers the whole month. If you don't come next month, you don't have to pay anymore. But remember, it's only one app. Whereas Power Apps Premium grants access to a limited number of apps, but it's an ongoing subscription that keeps charging you month after month, even if the user doesn't use any apps. So you can make a very simple calculation. If your user needs to launch two or more apps during the month, they you assign them Power Apps Premium. If they need to use only only one app or you expect to peak in the number of users that your application has during one given month but not thereafter that you may assign a pay as you go so you can play with those two to see which comes cheaper for your organization that's pretty cool so the question I always get is what kind of license should I get for my developers, my testers, and my end users? So for developers and testers, you almost always will want to go with Power Apps Premium or the former Power Apps per user because those users always end up using more than two apps per month. Remember that an application in different environments count as multiple applications. For example, you have your app in Dev, QA, and Prod. That counts as three apps. So for developers, testers, and users accessing a lot of applications across your organization, you will, you will want to get the Power Apps Premium and sporadic users. You just mark your applications as pay as you go, and that's pretty much it. Okay, let's move on now to Power Automate. So before you were used to have Power Automate per user and Power Automate per flow. Glasses now are called Power Automate Premium and Power Automate Process. So I'm going to focus on the two type of licenses that you'll want to have for graphic developers access to Power Automate, enabling flows in the cloud or enabling flows in Windows machine. So automation of Windows machine, also known as RPA. So those are going to be Power Automate Premium and Power Automate Process. There is a relatively new member of the Power Automate family that being process mining. We're going to leave that for another video. And sometimes you get a Power Automate access depending on whether you're launching your flows from a Power Apps or you have all the Microsoft products. So again, that is for another video. I'm going to focus on Power Automate Premium and process. So Power Automate Premium, and this is very interesting. The premium license you assign to a user and that allows the user to run and develop. This is your developer license for flows in the cloud and flows in Windows machine. This used to be separate capabilities, but now they're part of the same license. And this is great because you can start automations running on the cloud that communicate with automations in Windows machine and return to the cloud. So now the ecosystem is closer together. Now, Power Automate Process. This you assign to an automation. The usual workflow is your developers develop automations. You give your developers a premium license. 
and then the application is ready to run autonomously, then you get a Power Automate process license. This is how you enable that automation to run autonomously without human supervision. That's the main difference. So long story short, you need this for development and this in production. That's it. Okay, so that's going to make it for this first piece of content on Power Platform. Definitely licensing is one of the most complicated aspects of modern technologies and the low code, no code is not exception. Luckily, I get to work on this almost every day and I'm glad to break it down for you guys. Please let me know if you want to see more content related to Power Platform, specifically implementations, Power Apps, and Power Automate. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.